My name's Jonathan Jarvis. I'm uh, a professor in sports science in Liverpool in the UK. And uh, we're here at the moment at this meeting in Montegrotto, organized by Ugo Carraro, who's an old friend. And I've been to this meeting many times before. Um, but my expertise is on electrical stimulation of muscle. So I've been working on that uh, experimentally for many years. And uh, the remarkable thing about muscle is that it is so adaptable. It's able to change. So we can see that um, in bodybuilding when muscles grow bigger. But you can see the change in uh, marathon training where somebody who may exercise very little when they begin a training program they can become uh, able to run for many kilometers. So muscle is adaptable and that, that's what interests me is uh, the extent of the adaptation and how you can best induce those adaptations. So that, 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 that's relevant to human health because sometimes, um, well very commonly, people don't exercise very much so that has, the, that has a real effect on, on muscle itself. So, for example, if, if muscle is not used very much, the numbers of mitochondria fall. And that means that uh, the muscle is not able to generate the fuel that it needs for long-term activity. So training, either voluntary training or by electrical stimulation, can improve the situation, improve blood flow, improve the number of mitochondria in the muscle, sometimes increase the size of the muscle, and that helps uh, in general human health. So I said I worked on electrical stimulation of muscle. So in that, that's a case where you can provide exercise when voluntary exercise is difficult. So in the extreme case, you can imagine um, a person who has broken a bone. Let's say an elderly person who has broken a bone in their leg, so they are actually in bed. They're unable to exercise. And we know that when muscle doesn't exercise at all, then the muscle loses mass. It becomes very small very quickly. So that can be a, a big problem for elderly people who have broken a bone because even when the bone has mended, their muscles may be so weak that it's difficult for them to regain mobility when they get out of bed. So one example of a potential use for electrical stimulation is to exercise their muscles while they are in bed, while the bone is mending. And uh, that sort of rehabilitation, I think, will, um, will be effective yeah, in the future. And some groups are working on that, yes. The question is, that's a good idea, but how long each day should you stimulate the muscle? That's a big question. Or maybe you should stimulate it once every three days. So those questions, how much stimulation and what... Uh, what electrical parameters you should use to produce the stimulation in a person in bed, they are still open questions. Well, of course, stimulation by electrical means through the skin is inconvenient because you have to uh, expose the skin, uncover the skin, and then place electrodes on the skin and then provide the electrical current. Um, and that's possible, but it's inconvenient and uh, can be unpleasant. I wouldn't say painful, but unpleasant. There are some new technologies um, which may be applicable, in particular magnetic stimulation. So it's possible to stimulate muscles via their nerves by magnetic stimulation. And there are a few companies in the world working on magnetic stimulators which would stimulate muscles through clothing so you don't need to expose the skin um, and also it's 
uh, it's more comfortable than electrical stimulation. So there are different ways to activate muscles, even in persons who are in bed. The evidence shows that the response to exercise, whether it's voluntary exercise or exercise by artificial stimulation, the response is really preserved in older people. So you get just the same benefit in elderly persons as you can do in younger persons. Yeah, Older persons may have more difficulty with voluntary exercise because they, they're more likely to have problems with their joints. Yeah, painful knees or painful shoulders. Um, and therefore electrical stimulation or, or what I call assisted exercise may be more appropriate in elderly persons. And some of the colleagues here at this meeting are doing that sort of stimulation. So uh, Dr. Kerr and Dr. Kren uh, have a Winfred Meyer, they have a, a system where, yes, elderly people can put their own electrode system on their thighs, the quadriceps muscles in the legs, and um, yeah, arrange, uh, you know, set the parameters of the stimulation, and as you say, stimulate their muscles while they're watching television or yeah, when they're resting at home, if you like. So it's very, it's convenient. Yeah.